Wake them up. Wake them up. Envy, ye, and Charlemagne. Wake up. Wake up. Everybody that's anybody comes to the Breakfast Club. You know, you give voice to people that would be voiceless. Right now, your show has the pulse of the culture. Yeah. Everyone smells rich <laughs> and successful. Where y'all at now? Can't nobody tell y'all. Non-stop entertainment. The Breakfast Club. Wake, wake, your, wake your punk ass up. You damn right. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 yo. Good morning, Angela Yee. Good morning, DJ MV. Charlamagne the God. Peace to the planet. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Ah, good morning. Did you have to think about that? Mm-mm. You taking water in between uh sipping water in between talking. You know what I haven't heard of heard about in a few days? What's that? COVID. Well, numbers have been dropping rapidly. I ain't heard it. In New York, they said it, I think they said it dropped like eighty percent or something in New York. Yeah, yep. I haven't seen it on in, in the media or anything like that in just a few days. I think that yesterday they just um, approved the Moderna, like f- uh, officially approved Moderna vaccine, because you know it was emergency approval use at first. Oh, so they they approved it for. Uh, so uh, it's like permanent, not yeah. just emergency. Well, other things are more FDA important approved. for people right yeah, now. FDA like approved. Amy just won Jeopardy, so they, they're they not talking about Amy it. Amy did not just win Jeopardy. She Tom lost Brady Jeopardy, just actually. Retired. Amy actually just lost Envy. See, I, I, just, I, I hear giving out fake news early in the morning. Just start hmm. off. First two minutes of the show. Well, Everybody else does it. last night I had a great night. I went to go see MJ the Musical. Oh, how was that? It was opening night. It was amazing. When I tell you, the dancing, there was like three different stages of Michael Jackson on there. So three different Michael Jacksons. But to see like a young Michael when he was part of the Jackson 5, it tells the whole story of him signing to Motown, going to the Apollo, all the different performances when he was younger, and he's all getting ready for a major tour, but his struggle with pills and things like that. So it was opening night. But it was great. Like, if you don't ever go to Broadway plays or you love Broadway plays, this is something everybody would enjoy. If you're a fan of Michael Jackson. I'm going to definitely go check it out. Hey, who's not a fan of Michael Jackson? I don't I'm know. There was just a couple protesters out there. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. they try, of course. They tried to cancel yeah, Michael so a couple Yeah, there's a couple people ago. who are not fans. Trust me. Because of that HBO documentary. But like, when I tell you, they was in there jamming. People was standing up, dancing. That's dope. I mean, the performances... Top tier. So just a great recommendation. Valentine's Day is coming up. Maybe that's a good Valentine's Day date. Just some suggestions. I don't I don't see the problem. And it was sold out, right? Uh yeah. It was opening night. I think I kept hearing people say that Paris Jackson was there that night. I don't know if she really was, but I heard Ooh, that people... blanket? That's not blanket, is it? No. No. Oh. <laughs> blanket somebody else? Yes. I thought blanket was Paris nickname. Mm-mm. And what about um, vaccination? You just had to have vaccination cards and that Yeah, was it? you had to have your vaccination card. You did have to be fully vaccinated to get okay. in. All right, mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to check that one out. Now, uh, yesterday was my wife's birthday, so she went to dinner with her friend. So it was Daddy Daycare. Mm. And I love Daddy Daycare. It's, it's, we watch all type of movies. We we have the best time. So that was my morning. So. I saw a nice Daddy Daycare back. sounds wild. You posted what? of Because you're just daddy. No, ain't no it, damn daycare. I call it daddy daycare. <laughs> okay, you ain't no babysitter. That's your, you a father. I didn't say babysitter. I said daddy daycare. Same difference. No, it's not. You don't drop your kids off to the daddy. Well, I guess some people do. Some people do. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not you. <laughs> nah, okay, you in the daddy. house. Nah, that's daddy daycare, man. All right. The daddy daycare got to cook. We got to survive. We got to cook. Survive. I, I don't know how to cook much of anything. It's called being a father. It's called, being, called making sandwiches. So okay. Last night, everybody had sandwiches but the baby, and we had a good time. We had a sleepover. Well, salute to you and all your little A sleepover? Man. Don't you live with them? Yeah, we had a niggas, sleepover guys. in this the yeah. Oh, my God. Sky <laughs> just Sky no, just y'all live together. Yeah. You have a sleepover every night. I get no. what you're saying, though. You yeah, do that with the kids sometimes. In my bed, we had a huge sleepover. We watched movie. We had snacks. It's called a sleepover. I get what you you get them eat snacks in the bed? Yes. We had, we had a good time last oh, night. I was never allowed to do that. So. Salute no. to you. Got all them little cities in your bed. That's goddamn right. Little Milwaukee and little Chicago. Had London, had Brooklyn, had Jackson, and Peyton. We all of them. All of them in the bed last night. Name them after three cities and a quarterback. <laughs> All right. Well, Is there a Peyton somewhere? A city? I'm sure. Probably not, right? It has to be. It's definitely a Jackson. Jackson, yeah. Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. Brooklyn, New York. In London, London. London, London, London. Where's, where's London at? England. England. Okay. England. I'm sure there's a Peyton somewhere. But Orlando. Let's get, let's get the show cracking. All right. Um, <laughs> Benny the Butcher will be joining us this morning. Whoop, whoop. Griselda gang and all that. So we're going to be kicking it with uh, Benny the Butcher. The Butcher bit. coming. And then we got front page news. What are we talking about? Well, Tom Brady has officially announced his retirement. You bastards. You bastards stepped on Tom Brady's retirement announcement. They sure did. Okay, because you want to be first. Sure Jesus did. Christ. He's like, I know it was a secret. All right. Well, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.
Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get some front page news. Well, like we just said, Tom Brady has officially announced his retirement. Now, what did he say in that statement, Yee? Yes, at the age of 44, he is widely considered the greatest quarterback ever in NFL history. Seven Lombardi trophies, the most championships won by a single player, five Super Bowl MVPs. So he posted on his Instagram page, I've always believed the sport of football is an all-in proposition. If a 100% competitive commitment isn't there, you won't succeed. And success is what I love so much about our game. There is a physical, mental, and emotional challenge every single day that has allowed me to maximize my highest potential. He said, this is difficult for me to write, but here it goes. I'm not going to make that competitive commitment anymore. I have loved my NFL career, and now it's time to focus my time and energy on other things that require my attention. Amen. I wonder if he's mad that they stepped on his uh, retirement I'm sure. Because I'm sure he probably didn't even want to announce it right now. He probably wanted to wait till after the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Let the Super Bowl get his shine, and then, you know, you retire in the offseason. Mm-hmm. Get you just do. But if you Tampa Bay, do you retire his jersey? He played there two years. Won yes, he won your Super Bowl. And he's Tom Brady. He's the greatest sports figure of all time. All yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Well, top three. He did thank a lot of people. He thanked everybody with the Bucks, his business partners, his agents, his family. Now, he did not specifically mention his time with the Patriots or anybody within that organization in his statement, but he did later thank the team and its fans in response to a statement that was issued by Robert Kraft, owner of the Patriots. And so he did, Robert Kraft did say, words cannot describe the feelings I have for Tom Brady nor adequately express the gratitude my family, the New England Patriots, and our fans have for Tom for all he did during his career. A generation of football fans have grown up knowing only an NFL in which Tom Brady dominated. That's right. Did he mention any team in his announcement, though? When he first? Mm-hmm. He did in his uh, yep, initial announcement? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. But he did mention them, obviously, in response uh, to that. So. Well, I'm sure he's going to sign a one-day contract with the Patriots and retire as a Patriot. I'm sure that's going to happen. Yeah, so, you know, congratulations to him. And he said, last, and the last person he thanked in his statement was his wife, Giselle, and his children, Jack, uh, Benny, and Vivi. He said, you are my inspiration. Our family is my greatest achievement. I always came off the field and home to the most loving and supportive wife who has done everything for our family to allow me to focus on my career. Her selflessness allowed me to reach new heights professionally, and I am beyond words, what you mean to me and our family. He said, te amo, amor. People take it for granted, man, but you're never, ever going to see a Tom Brady in, in, in ever again. Not in this lifetime. The man went to 10 Super Bowls. Do you know how difficult it is to go to 10 Super Bowls? You know how hard it is to go to one in the NFL? He went to 10 of them and won seven. He's got more championships than every franchise in the NFL. That's unreal. With the degree of difficulty of football, the violence in football, the fact that when you go to the playoffs, you're literally one and done. There's no seven-game series, no five-game series. It's either win or go home. And for him to have seven championships, to leave one team after winning six, go to another one and win a a, a seventh one at the age of 43, 44, Mm -hmm. that's unreal. He lost two to the Giants, so. Nobody cares. <laughs> Damn, MV. I out, mean, nobody man. cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> what a time to bring that up. Just wanted to throw that out. That's, but that's unreal. It is. Like, on, that's it's unreal. Twenty-two you, years in the league is unreal. You taking playing football? Tw- if playing football, like people don't even last ten seasons. This dude won ten Super Bowls. Now I saw Shaq left a comment. No man, get your butt up and do one more year. <laughs> I, I agree. I want to see. I, I just want to see him go out the right way. You know, when, hmm. when I'm meaning. Every city he goes to, and they show him that love and that respect. Kind of like, you know, I'm try- who went out like that? Like Dwayne Wade went out like that. Kobe Bryant went out like that. I would love to see him go out like that, where every city show him his respect. Yeah, yeah. listen, those games will go crazy because out of everybody will go because it's his last time playing. Absolutely. Yeah, but you know what? Tom Brady knows his uh, body he and he knows his, his mind better than everybody else, and that's why he's been able to, you know, be in the league for 22 years. So if he's walking away, he's walking away for a reason. Mm-hmm. He know he's left it all out there. All right. Well, that is your front page news. And that's the other thing, too. Not one bad year. Nope. <laughs> not, literally not one bad year. Like, he's leaving on the high of highs. Correct. Like, Tom Brady's good. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up right now. Phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up, wake your ass. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, what up, man? It's Charles, man. I'm coming from Crown Heights. I'm at work, actually, but I'm chilling, though. 
Charles, what up? Get it off your chest. Yo, check it out, man. I had a job that I loved, man. And not only did they fire me, I'm not even allowed on the property anymore, and I don't think it's right. Why? What do you do, though? You yeah. got, I got to hear both sides. Yeah, why you got so, fired? Check, it out, check it out, Charlemagne. I, I was I, I was security at Club Live, man. Okay. And, and, you know Club Live. Yeah. Right. yeah. And um, somebody that had been there for years told me to let somebody in. So I let them in the club, man. Uh -oh. And then the next day, the person I let in the club told it. So as soon as I found out they told it, I went and told my boss that I did it. I didn't tell about the other guy who told me to let him in. And I ended up getting fired over it. And they said, not only am I fired, I can't even come on the property or come to Club Live anymore. And I don't think that's right, man. Wow. Damn, who'd you let in? Some random guy, man. I, I kept on telling him no, but he said, he, he said he was like, hey, man, go get that guard over there. And I, and I went and got my superior, and I said, hey, man, old boy said, uh, one again. He looked up and said, okay, he nodded his head, so I let him in. Well, why didn't you tell another person? Because I thought since I was new, they wouldn't really trip on it because they knew I was new and I was still adjusting. And I didn't want to bring him into it because I didn't want him to get in trouble. Well, that's what happened. Well, you unfortunately you took the L for some... I, didn't, I got fired because I didn't snitch. Yeah, basically. It's Damn. like doing time because you didn't want to tell another person. Man, that ain't right, man. I mean, I love... I love. I, I even attended the club before I worked there, man. And I wouldn't even take the job if I knew they were going to ban me. Well, I mean, let's be honest. They not going to know. <laughs> that, that's you what you said. Yeah. You sound more mad about not being able to go to Club Live no more than you do losing <laughs> you your job. You can't even hang out at the pool at the but Fountain to Blue? Honest, to be honest, it is somewhat that, man. Even though I'm older now, I'm like 42. I, I go to the club every now and then, man. But to be banned, I'm not the type of person that should be banned from anywhere, man. I'm not a I'm not a bad guy or nothing, you know? Nah, I get it. I mean, you can't be living in Miami and don't have no access to Club Live. Even if even if you're too old to go, you still should want to feel like you can if you want yeah, to. Man, and and the thing about it, this was in June, and, and and last Friday I called I called um, Human Resources and I told him because I had talked to my boss and he was telling me he was like call in six months, you know, we because even even employees who get who, who get let go in a in a positive way after six months you you can uh, come back you gotta wait six months before you can come back on the property. I think so you I should, called I... because my bo my boss told me to call, so I called it after him. Then the Human Resources lady put me on hold. Then after after about five minutes, she got back up there and said. Hey, listen, I don't know what your bosses told you or what they told you, but that decision is on me. We say you can't come back. This is a private club. Well, I think you should get on your knees and, uh, you know, ask Lil Wayne for forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? Pray for repentance. I mean, well, unfortunately, way. in that position, you probably should have been honest about what happened. Absolutely. What did the guy do? What did the guy do when they didn't want him in the club? Well, what, what happened was he came between 4 and 5 a.m., you know what I'm saying? And, and the register is already closed. At 4, correct. You know what I'm saying? So he got there late and... I guess they tried to kick him out sooner than he wanted to be out, so he told that I let him in. Hey, King, go find you another Damn, job. Yeah, he snitched on you, okay. and then you just sni didn't snitch on these people you don't even know. I don't care anymore. I don't feel sorry <laughs> that you can't get in the we club. Were, we were co workers, man. We were co workers, so I, I felt like it. we were a team, man. That's the reason. I know you didn't think he was going to step up and be like, I told him to let him in. Yeah, that's crazy. I and mean, he, knew, he knew I was about to get fired because you know what he told me right before I went down to see the boss? He said, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he knew it was I'm about sorry. to go down. Go go find, there's a bunch of other clubs, man. Go to Booby Trap. Man, you better go find you a job. Yeah, worry about that I, damn club. He's a job. Job. I tried I, I to work story the next week and the Found Blue wouldn't let me work story well, because they do the security. Yeah, but it's the same hotel. Story, yeah, so you can't. It's not the same hotel, but uh, yeah, they own the story, man, and it sucks. Yeah, they own the same business. Yeah. Hey, There's have a, a zillion I, clubs in Miami, though, brother. Have a blessed day, King. Goodness gracious. I don't know what to tell him. He was really upset. He was. Six o'clock in the morning. Think I care if you can get But you know what? It was kind of a no-win situation. <laughs> if you snitch on somebody, everybody gonna hate you. Yeah. And then you told, you know, you didn't snitch and now you don't have a job. Goodness gracious. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Leo. What's up, y'all? What's up? Leo, what's up? Get it off your chest, bro. Hey, hey, hey. I don't like how y'all work for it, uh, uh. Tom Brady on the second day of Black History Month, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on now. You can't be celebrating white Jesus on the second day, man. Come hey, on, hey, man. I'm, I'm glad you're recognizing him as white Jesus because Tom Brady is the greatest white man of all time. He's number one over white Jesus. Yeah, here you go, man. Hey, man, I love y'all, man. I listen to y'all every day, bro. Like, well, thank you, brother. For real, since, since, since the 2010 high school days, man. Damn. Well, you have a good one, How brother. old are you now? <laughs> 20. 28, man. Damn. We old, bro. We've been out here. We've been out here. Have a good one, brother. Be safe out there, too. We've been we've been on the radio half of Tom Brady's career. That's right. Hello, <laughs> Literally. Yo. Yo. What is that, Amy? Yeah, what's up, bro? Get off your chest. Oh, yeah, man. Yo. Amy, I came to your house a while ago, man, with an artist named Coca-Cola. 
I don't know if you remember that. It's probably your old crib, too. It feels like you can't but, name yourself Coca-Cola. I don't know why. Definitely not. <laughs> no, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. That, that's, uh, I know, but I'm just saying. Was she shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle? That's why y'all called it that? It was a dude. It was a dude. It was a, it was a dude. Was he shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle? Is that why y'all called him that? Uh, man, come on, Charlamagne. You know that's a violation. I'm just asking you, was he shaped? Why y'all call him Coca-Cola? I don't know why it's been. Envy know why it's been. Envy knew the dude. I don't know. Okay, Envy, why? Who have, is this man with this Coke-shaped body? I have no idea. What are you talking about, Coca-Cola? But what, what happened? What's going on, bro? Anyway, look, I got, I'm, I'm an artist anyway, but, but I know y'all was uh, listening to that... Uh, um, what's that? The, the Yo Gotti joint. I did that joint. I wanted to figure out how to way to get it to y'all so y'all could check it out. Uh, you better send it to Gotti, not us. No, I don't give a about Gotti. I, I really felt so eerie doing it anyway, but what? I don't. I just, I just wanted y'all to hear it because y'all thought the beat was hot. But I got other music I want you to check out, bro. I will we'll spit something now. Are you talking about Coke, the rapper Coke? Not Coca Cola. Coke. Coke. That oh, was so thing you do know him. him. Okay. Now you, you remember. No damn now Coca-Cola. you remember. See? Yeah, Coke. Coke. Yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, He's a Coke, Coke boy? No, definitely not. No, nah, nah, this is way before that. This is way before my that. My brother Cole used to he used to write for a lot of uh, people in the industry. But all right, yeah, speak, brother. Uh, Bye. Wow, that was dope. Well, have a nice day. Blessings uh, to you. Uh, no, Peace, no, King. Cut it out, Charlotte. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Have yeah. a great day. We appreciate you, King. Uh, nah, yo, can you check, can you check out the grandness that your way? I, like, like. No, you yeah, gotta go now. To you, man. Speak. Okay, I'm trying to stay fresher. It's so much pressure. Dead ass broke. I got a nun on my dresser. I wow. tried to go to college, couldn't finish a semester. Thugging in the streets. I wasn't thinking about a lecture. Wow. Professor, Parents classes. just don't understand. Huh? You want me to be box? You want me to be box? Uh 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 uh. How old are you, brother? See, but it's, 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 this is gonna be this is gonna be the best thing ever when I do make it up there and we yes. gonna have this conversation. Can't no, we not. Like this day. How, how old are you? But I, I, I appreciate y'all time. I appreciate everything y'all do on the radio. Like you I sound so hurt. Why you sound so hurt? You call up here rapping like it's 1987, and you mad at us? <laughs> no, oh, cut it out, Charlamagne. Come on, man. Oh, and I want some books too. Yeah, I'm some books. I'll send you some books, brother. Anything to keep you out the studio. I'll definitely send you <laughs> nah, some books. Nah, nah, don't, 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 don't even go there. Don't even go there. What word to my mother? Don't go there. I'm What's send, your rapping name? You, I'm gonna send you the unapologetic guide to black mental health. And um, you got any kids? I appreciate that. Yee, yee, yee. It's um, it's it's the real underscore ancient Greco. A-N-T-I-N-T. Ancient is the right word. <laughs> ancient is the right word, King. I, I bet you this if you check out three songs of my music, you'll change. All right, give me one more. Give me one more. Just give me one more no, verse. No, 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 I'm not going to give you more. Come on, give me one more verse. This don't give it no justice. <laughs> give me one more verse, man. Give me a verse. I'll go first and then you go. You go, ready? Go. In West right, Philadelphia, right, right, born and raised on the playground. Huh? What, man? <laughs> Negative. Yo, word of mouth. The, the real, the real underscore ancient Greco. A n c i e n t g r e c c o. All right, man. Have a good one. Blessings, King. Yo, I appreciate everything I do. Good, good <laughs> life in the morning. Y'all got me up. Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God, a- DJ Envy. Blessings to all y'all. It's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you <laughs> without a dope rhyme. Step two. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right, yeah, you got rumors on the way? Yes, and we'll be talking about Lamar Odom. He is still not over Khloe Kardashian and expressing how much he loves and misses her. All right, keep it locked. That's coming up next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. You know, funny thing about that song, Chosen, the TikTok challenge, one of my friends was saying her daughter was doing this challenge, and she was like, wait a minute, let me hear these lyrics to this song. She was like, I don't know if she should be dancing to this. Yeah, that's most of a lot of them songs now. The kids don't know the words. They be saying the words. They be like, what you say? They don't know what they say. Hell, I don't know the words. I can listen and still don't know the words mm-hmm. to most of these songs. All right, well, let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Lamar Odom. It's time. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, Celebrity Big Brother premieres tonight, actually, on CBS and an exclusive sneak peek of this new season. Here's Lamar Odom talking to fellow contestant Tajik Hall, saying that he misses his ex-wife. I dreamt my ex-wife last night. Who's your ex-wife? You don't know? How many ex-wives have you had? Just one. Oh, so Chloe. Yeah, just the one and the only. Yeah. Do you guys still talk? No. I miss her so much. I wish I could take that time back. Well, (laughs) that's that. So that's for the new season of Celebrity Big Brother. You think he got Chloe on his vision board? Yes. 
She don't even talk to him. Now he really putting it out there that he want Chloe back, huh? Yeah. Lord have mercy. All right, now R. Kelly has tested positive for COVID while in jail, so the judge has granted an appeal extension for him. Uh, he was supposed to actually uh, be in court, but he couldn't be because of obviously COVID. So it's not great news for his health, but he did get that extension um, as well. So he has an additional two weeks to file an appeal in his federal racketeering case. Now he has until February 17th to formally fight his September conviction. And ABC News has suspended Whoopi Goldberg. We talked about this yesterday. Now, Whoopi Goldberg was under fire for speaking on The View about the Holocaust, and she got a lot of criticism for these statements. The Holocaust isn't about race. No, it's not about race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. That's what it's about. But it's about white supremacy. It's well, about but it's not, after it's not about and ideal and race. It's it's the, but these are two Romans. white groups of people. Well, that's how do we have to black people see too. them as white people? And they, but you're missing the point. You're yeah. missing the point. Yeah. The minute you turn it into race, it goes down this alley. Let's talk about it for what it is. It's how people treat each other. It's a problem. Now, she had apologized right after that. And she said yesterday on our show, I misspoke. I tweeted about it last night, but I want you to hear it from me directly. I said something that I feel a responsibility for not leaving unexamined because my words have set so many people, which was never my intention. I understand why now. And for that, I am deeply, deeply grateful because the information I got was really helpful and it helped me understand some different things. I said the Holocaust wasn't about race and was instead about man's inhumanity to man. But it is indeed about race because Hitler and the Nazis considered Jews to be an inferior race. Well, who didn't know that, though? That's just historically and factually wrong. I couldn't, you know, like, who didn't know that? Well, ABC News President Kim Godwin has since released a statement saying, effective immediately, I'm suspending Whoopi Goldberg for two weeks for her wrong and hurtful comments. While Whoopi has apologized, I've asked her to take time to reflect and learn about the impact of her comments. The entire ABC News organization stands in solidarity with our Jewish colleagues, friends, family, and community. That's whack to me. Yeah, I didn't expect that. I didn't think she would get suspended. That's whack. I I thought they would send a... uh, a Jewish scholar to the view to inform her on why what she said was just historically and factually wrong. Wouldn't that make more sense, though? Yeah. She didn't say it, ma- she didn't say it malicious. She said something that she was, uh, you she know, was uh, educated about, That's and it. she was wrong. And now we can't be wrong. Now if we're wrong, we get suspended for two weeks? Well, listen, I can never tell people how to react to something. You know, I'm not in the position to say it for well, two weeks suspension. Well, she didn't say anything malicious, though. I can't say that because I'm not in that community. She so. was just wrong. Like, if somebody says something about something that they don't know about and you correct them and they say, you know what, I apologize, I was wrong. What's yes, the but I'm not Jewish, so I can't say if what she said was malicious or not. You know, I'm not in a position to say if a two-week suspension is justified. So, you know, who am I to tell anybody from the Jewish community they shouldn't be offended by that or that wasn't malicious? I just didn't expect that. I thought they would send a Jewish scholar up there to inform her on why what she said was historically and but, factually but, wrong. But people get offended all the time. And when something if somebody offends you and you don't know much about a situation or something you don't know about and somebody corrects you, and you'll be like, you know what, I was wrong, I apologize. Mm-hmm. I thought that was the whole basis of life, you know, learning things and then making mistakes and not standing on your mistakes. True indeed, but... That's what I thought. What do I always say? Free speech is not free. There's a price to everything that comes out your mouth. And, you know, you can't name that price. You can say whatever you want as long as you're willing to deal with the consequences. Right. Well, one thing she did do was admit that she was wrong and apologize immediately after. And that is the Mm -hmm. correct thing to do when you are wrong. Because, I mean, racism fueled... Nazi ideology and policies. I told y'all this yesterday. Everybody, who doesn't know that though? The Nazis when they view- did be blonde hair, blue eyes, yes. they thought that was a superior race. The, the Nazis viewed the world as being divided up into inferior and superior races, and they believed the Jewish people were uh, not a religious de- dom- denomination, but a non-European race, a dangerous non-European race. So yes, the Holocaust was based on race. All right, now this is an interview that actually took place over. Was it? Yeah, it was last year, and this was for Afrotech and Rick Ross. Uh, was talking about how he didn't understand math in school. I I would assume that kids nowadays also don't know multiplication the way that they should because you could just do it on a calculator on your phone. They still learn and it. It's so, yeah, they do. But here's what Rick Ross had to say. And I was a jackass. I was a comedian. <laughs> I had a good sense of humor. I was the funny dude and all that. And I don't think just because I naturally wanted to be the jackass, but I didn't know the answers to the questions and all the stuff that they was writing on the, on the wall. And that might have been my way to cover that up because I never understood, I never learned my multiplication still to this day. So when imagine when they began going into pre-algebra, A equals E. That <laughs> was like a whole nother language to me. I just wanted to walk out. I feel him. Yeah, I understand exactly what you're saying. And- 
Especially when you're in the Calculus. class. That, when you're in the class too busy, you know, you're disrupting class and you're the class mm-hmm. clown and you're not paying attention. Yes. The, the bad thing about some of those curriculums, it, you don't use a lot of that stuff that we learn in school. Like, you definitely I, use I, multiplication. Multiplication, yes, yes. But a lot of the other stuff that you, you, you were it's talking like about, we don't necessarily use. I don't even know what he was talking about. Well, it also depends so I can't on what even you, say if I it, use it or not. It also depends <laughs> on what you want to do later in That's life. That's what I'm saying, but a lot of people don't. You know, it's a, I think they should change the curriculum to things that I think that it's more, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for, that everybody uses. Yeah, but like you also too. don't know what you might want to do. So sometimes you have to learn some of these fundamentals so later on in life, what if you do want to do something that you should have learned that for? I think we should all learn as much as possible. But boy, when you start bringing them letters into math, that's when you start confusing me. A equals Z. A equals Z. <laughs> what? <Is it> e? <laughs> D plus C equals what? MC what? All right. That's well, when that you start is your me. That's when I say call your mama. Rumor report. <laughs> <laughs> well, get your mama, baby. You know, you right. know I don't even think, think they teach kids how to write in script anymore. What is script? Script. <laughs> script. Cursive. Cursive. Oh, say script. cursive, nigga! I thought you talking about the script. I'm like, did you mean they don't teach kids how to write scripts? I thought you were talking about scripts like, <laughs> <laughs> in movies. I'm like, what? Say cursive. I ain't never said no scripts. I never said script. I'm gonna be some up no stuff because I ain't never heard nobody say script. You, you ever said script? cursive or script? Oh, what script? Script. I ain't never heard script. I heard cursive. Not script. He thought you were saying strip. He thought strip. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was cursive. <laughs> we didn't say okay. cursive. We said script. You learn how to write. I, say I, strip. I, I know how to write cursive. I, mean, I, I know how to write cursive. <laughs> this way, you know. Yes. I ain't Uh-oh. never heard of no script. I know how to write some scripts. All right, man. We got front page news next week. Well, well let's talk about? about Brian Flores. He's suing the NFL and three teams, and that's all for uh, alleged discrimination. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Let's go. It's time to wake up. Yeah. It's The Breakfast Club. Angela Yee here, and my friends at The General Insurance give you quality car insurance for less. Check out their affordable rates and flexible payment options by calling 800-GENERAL or visiting thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee, Summer Street. WWPR FMHD1 New York. And our heart radio station. Let's get some front page news. Now, Tom Brady has officially retired. Yes, he has, and he did post that announcement. So I know there was some speculation about it. Some people felt like, well, uh, you know, his father had said he wasn't retiring. His agent had said that it wasn't happening. But he did officially post a statement. He went on social media and said, I've always believed the sport of football is an all-in proposition. If a 100% competitive commitment isn't there, you won't succeed. And success is what I love so much about our game. He said, this is difficult for me to write, but here it goes. I am not going to make that competitive commitment anymore. I have loved my NFL career, and now it's time to focus my time and energy on other things that require my attention. Listen, man, greatest white man of all time. I know it's Black History Month, but it needs to be said. He's the greatest white man of all time, number one uh, over white Jesus, okay? And I, I would say probably number one sports figure of my lifetime. All right, now Chris Bosh says he's boycotting the NFL, and that is over the lack of black head coaches. In his post, he said, watching the way the NFL is treating black coaches has me pissed off. Plain and simple. Until they fix this, I cannot keep spending my weekends supporting the league. And he said, there's now just one black head coach in the league, Pittsburgh's Mike Tomlin. And he said he calls that appalling. And this all ties into Brian Flores, the former Miami Dolphins coach. He says that racist, he's alleging racism in hiring practices. And he's suing the NFL and three teams. So, according to this lawsuit that was filed yesterday, he is uh, seeking class action status. He says that Dolphins owner Stephen Ross tried to incentivize him to tank or purposely lose games after he was hired in 2019. He alleges that he was offered $100,000 for every loss that season and that as the team won games late in the season, the general manager told him that the... um, owner was mad that his on-field success was compromising the team's draft position. He also alleges that Ross pressured him to recruiting a prominent quarterback at the end of the 2019 season. He wouldn't do it, though, because that would violate the rules of tampering in the NFL. And then he said that uh, he was invited onto a yacht for lunch and then was informed that the quarterback was, quote, conveniently arriving at the marina for an impromptu meeting. He refused the meeting, left the yacht, and that's when he got uh, was treated with disdain. He was held as someone who was noncompliant and difficult to work with and was later fired on January 10th, 2022, even though 
though he recorded the franchise's first back-to-back winning season since 2003. He also says that the Giants interviewed him for their head coaching vacancy for no other reason than compliance with the NFL's Rooney Rule, which requires teams to interview minority candidates for their open positions. Yeah, I think all those teams should be forced to answer questions because I don't know why Brian uh, Flores don't have a job. I don't know why I have uh, why Eric Benemy hasn't been offered a head coaching position in the NFL. That's why I want the Dallas Cowboys to hire. I mean, if 70% of the players in the league are black, you would think that at least you know, half of the head coaches would be black, uh, or at least a quarter of the head coaches, but Shoot. one head coach? I mean, you would think one? a quarter of the of the NFL would be owned by some black, black people, but no. Mm. Now, but according to this lawsuit, some of the things that Flores said he would like to see address, increase influence of black individuals in hiring, increase the objectivity of hiring, terminating GMs, head coaches, and coordinators, increase the number of black coordinators, incentivize hiring and retention of black GMs, head coaches, and coordinators, and transparency of pay for GMs, head coaches, and coordinators. And the lawsuit also seeks unspecified damages from the league. And they did respond to that lawsuit yesterday afterwards. Uh, The response, the NFL and our clubs are deeply committed to ensuring equitable employment practices and continue to make progress in providing equitable opportunities throughout our organizations. Diversity is core to everything we do. And there are a few issues. There are few issues on which our clubs and our internal leadership teams spend more time. We will defend against these claims, which are without merit. I can't tell. I really can't tell. I can't tell that they're so diverse. <laughs> like, like, it don't reflect. You can't say you're diverse, but then we can just look at the league and see that it's one black head coach. How does that reflect diversity? How? It doesn't. How? It doesn't. If se- Like I said, if 70% of the players in the league are black, you would think that at least half of the coaches would be black. At least a quarter. Would you really think that? When, when, how many owners are black? Yeah, well, none. But, you know, owners is a matter of uh, capital. So, you know, black people, like you see Robert Smith in the mix right now, black right. people are just starting to get their capital up where they can, you know, make a purchase like that. But as far as head coaches, those are hiring decisions. Yeah, well, like so you So you got said, these good old boys who are choosing mm-hmm. not to hire black people. Well, that's why I would love to have a, a black owner so we can make the decisions that we want to make. All right, well, that is your front page news. All right. Oh, and salute to the good sister Angela Rye, too. You know, she just... Uh, she just, she just, she's, she's part of ESPN now. Drop on the clues, mom. Oh, Angela. Congrats, Angela. Yes. So she'll be on first take this morning, actually discussing uh, the Brian Flores situation. Dope, 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 dope. Perfect divine timing, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Now, when we come back, Benny the Butcher will be joining us. We're the Butcher coming. Benny the Butcher. So uh, we'll talk to him next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Listen, last night I finally got to go see MJ, the new Michael Jackson musical on Broadway, and it was opening night. I went with my homegirl, Tashara, and when I tell you we were dancing in our seats, we were standing up, clapping, going crazy. It was amazing. The whole experience, I absolutely loved it. I actually want to go see it again already. The New York Times said, quote, MJ delivers the thrills and then some. First of all, it was hit after hit. And, you know, MJ had the hits, but it was all woven into the storyline about MJ putting on the dangerous tour in 1992 with scenes watching him grow up from the Jackson 5. There had to be close to 40 songs performed like Rock With You, Billie Jean, Wanna Be Starting Something, Beat It, Smooth Criminal, Thriller. You got to see a little Michael Jackson, the Jackson 5, the dangerous tour and Miles Frost. Oh, my goodness. You got to see him to believe it it was really like seeing Michael Jackson live on stage he had the moonwalking he was doing the robot his voice everything but it also really helped you get a look into Michael's creative process. If you're thinking about getting tickets, trust me, do it now. The Chicago Tribune said, quote, it's an eye-popping rush of excitement. They are absolutely correct. Visit MJTheMusical.com. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Benny the Butcher. The Butcher. The Butcher coming. Well, how are you, first of all, my I'm brother? good, man. This is the first time good, here, man. too. I was going to ask you, you know, you being from, from Buffalo, do you, do you feel like you're finally starting to get a little respect? Because at one time, New York City was looked at as Queens, Brooklyn, mm-hmm. Bronx, Yonkers, mm-hmm. Mount Vernon. But that's probably Jersey even a little bit. But that's probably as far as it went. Right, right, right. I feel I feel we definitely getting some respect. I guess we had to bring something to the table to y'all for y'all to respect it. They still don't claim y'all like that. 
They don't. No, they don't. What are you talking about rap? They do though. When they not talk about, really. When they, when, they talk about, when they talk about when they talk about this type of rap, they do. They do. It depends it's on what the debate is. It depends on who in the room too. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It depends what the debate is. If they're trying to say, well, who's popping from New York right now? They be like, oh, this, what I'm this say. person, that person, like, well, that ain't real rap. Then they be right. like, oh, Griselda. This That's what I'm gonna true. say though. Right. This is what I'm gonna say though. People don't know. Even though me, I, I'm from Buffalo. I talk with a Buffalo accent, not a New York City accent. But to everybody outside New York State, it's the same. Shit. They don't know. You know what I'm saying? So we need to stick together. Now, for people that don't know, how did you get into the game? How did Benny the Butcher start rapping? And how did you get signed to Shade? And how did the whole thing take off? Because this is your first time here. Right, right. Okay, boom. If y'all don't know me, I'm Benny the Butcher. I'm from Griselda Records. West Side Gun, he's the owner of Griselda Records. He's the visionary. He's the curator. And Conway is his brother. Those are my big cousins. You know what I'm saying? So... When Wes got his situation, he came to get me naturally. But this is what we always been doing for years and years ago. We've been going to the studio in the 90s, clicking up, going to the studio together. You know what I mean? Just just rapping. So when he got a, we continue to do it. But we got older, you know, dudes having families, going to prison, whatever was going on, life, life happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So in the middle of that, he get his situation. So when it take off, like he come back and get me like, yo, Buzz, I got this situation. Come, come rock with me. And then it turned into this, you know what I'm saying? I just used my platform, the platform that he gave me. You know, them dudes letting me get on songs. They bringing me to the BT Cypher and just, you know what I'm saying? Just taking me around everywhere they go, interviews and everything. And I just, I made that jump, man. And the Real situation shit. was the Shady Deal? Yeah, the Shady Deal, you know what I'm saying? On the Tanner Talk 4, you know, you talk about how you were advised not to do the, do the Shady Deal. Man, shout out everybody at Shady Records, but it's just real by the time they start offering me contracts, it was too late. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was like, damn, why, why you ain't, I would have loved to sign with him in a, I'm like two, three years before that, but it's like, it didn't make sense at that time. Now you didn't get nothing that first deal. They said the first time you, you did something with them, you got nothing. Oh, no, I, I wasn't signed to Shady. Okay. When I went to Griselda, I signed my Griselda contract for zero dollars. That's my cousin. I'd do it again if I got to. It wow. about the money, you know what I'm saying? What's I said he, he uh, the shady deal he couldn't buy the, couldn't buy a pair of earrings with the they can buy earrings with that, with that, shady, with that. <laughs> or something to that effect he said on Tanner Talk. He said say something like that. He yeah. said something like that. <laughs> Those are your record. <laughs> 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 so it wasn't a life changing situation. Hell yeah! You see, listen, you you know how to go. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it don't be about the money. See my mm -hmm. Dev Jam situation. It's not about the money. I got a lot of money out of. Mm -hmm. I ain't get to check yet. Yeah, watching this people calling me up. You ain't problems. get one point five yet. Why you say that? Why are you tell everybody? Oh, I thought that was public. <laughs> it was public. Whoa. <laughs> Why you tell everybody He's trying to line you up now. I, I, I thought it was public. Hood. Damn, Benny. It ain't public, but what I'm saying is that sometimes it don't be about the money. It's a, it be about the move that that move set up. Now, now what Snoop? made you after all this time sign with a major label? I was going to say, and, and how did Snoop be involved with that? What made me sign to a major label is that I want to expand my reach. It's music, man. Music is actually made for people to feel good. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I want I want my music to go far as it can. You know what I'm saying? I don't got to be doing like TikTok shit or I don't got to be going to go do songs with the newest trendy artists, but I want to expand my reach. You know what I mean? And what you had, what you had said? I said, how did Snoop get involved? Oh, oh, oh. Man, there's some real shit, You know what I'm saying? I don't know if they're going to get mad about me saying this, shit, but I'm going to tell you a whole story. Like right before X passed away, I was in Miami. Me, X, and Nori. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Zoe Dollars, too. Mm -hmm. We was all kicking it in. And there was some Dev Jam representatives down there. And they was telling, it was like, yo, you on sign? I'm like, yeah, I ain't got no deal. Long story short, a couple weeks passed. They set up a meeting up here. I came, I did the meeting. The meeting was cool. But what I'm not knowing, my managers is already talking to people at Dev Jam. I don't remember this dude's name. I wouldn't say his name up here anyway. But he ended up taking that meeting with me. It was, the meeting went good and sent the contract. Contract low as fuck, You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? Like, the other guys over there, they didn't like that shit. Like, man, we trying to work on something with this dude. You know what I'm saying? He sent his low ass contract. He was he was out of there after that, you know what I mean. And then another situation came. They we was working on it. They handed me another contract. It was still low. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying I'm a, I'm a hustler. I'm from the streets, so I don't know about like when they send you that. You supposed to say, hey, no, send this to my lawyer. Tell him let's negotiate. Me, I just stop answering the phone. They called me in to go meet Snoop. Like they brought Snoop in to be like, like yo, me, we trying to get this dude. Like mm -hmm. send him to Snoop. Snoop called me about a week later. Like yo, nephew, they said they sent you some contracts already. You ain't signed them. I just went back to Holloran. I'm like, it just, they just wasn't right. He was like, you know what? You got too many people talking for you. I'm going to get you on the three-way with the guy. Got on the three-way, told him what I wanted, what was my plans. They said, no problem. And they haven't cut the check yet? I didn't get the money yet. How does that work? You signed the contract already, right? Yeah, I guess, you know, end of the year, you know, Dev Jam take forever with the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have, you have any plans with the money? Because it's not like you're already making money. You're on the road, mm -hmm. you're touring, you're getting money. Yeah, I'm going uh, to buy me a crib, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to come to this man and tell him, I mean, get some advice, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? One of the first people I heard speak about y'all publicly was uh, Pooh from Little Brother. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Up here. Yeah. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, like ever since that moment, yeah. he was sitting in this chair. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. chair got motherfucking juice in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, so like, when he shouted out Tanner talking about Okay, okay. Yes, sir, yes, sir. When it since that moment, I realized like my I mean the trajectory. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? When he said my name, like in this room, real shit. Wow. Shout out rapper Big Pooh. I mean, appreciate you, brother. I owe you features, whatever you need, baby. Let's talk about that that record with Cole, man. Johnny P's caddy. When a rapper says they're the best rapper alive on somebody else's record. How do you respond to that? Do you want to go change your verse or? Man, f no. I'm not one of those dudes who's changing my verse. I'm not doing none of that. But if you ask me, he was talking to somebody. So yeah, I saw, folks say, yeah, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I saw folks saying they, they felt like he might have been taking shots at you on his own record. I was like, nah, it really depends on if you think Benny's Listen, let me raps say are real or not. You know what? That's what's fact. Because when he, when, he, when he said that, like, uh, the drug bars that y'all relying, mm -hmm. like, I, you know, I got their numbers. You know, I did mine. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I mean? Like, I... I I did what I did, so if it don't apply, let it fly. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? But what I'm saying is this. If you say, if y'all say y'all got the best morning show. Correct. If y'all say that, the people who got morning shows, who who's in who's who's in the rankings with y'all, mm -hmm. the niggas who got morning shows who nowhere or near y'all, they know y'all not talking about it. Mm -hmm. So the guys who everybody compare him with and put him in the rink with, like, to me, that's who he's looking at. Yeah, we've been sweet. debating that all week. And I, and I also said, I said, he probably, Cole probably waited till he got on the record with somebody who really did it to talk about those who aren't. Now, that's a fact, man. I just think, I just think he's asserting his dominance amongst the conversation. The three, four, five-headed monster. They, they say who the, who's his top five in the game right now. Mm -hmm. He's definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. So he's just like asserting his dominance. And that's what these dudes do, man. Like me, I know when I get on, when I get on a, a, a feature, I'm talking extra crazy on it. You hear uh, the record with you and Drake? No, no, no. Uh, you heard that? I have. Okay. <laughs> but you hear the uh, the baby came and K Dot record? Mm -hmm. K Dot going stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like yeah. you, you, you take them opportunities to get crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean. All right. When we come back, we got more with Benny the Butcher. Let's get into his new joint featuring J Cole. It's the Breakfast Club. Group. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Benny the Butcher. Charlemagne, what you? Why are you holding on to the Drake record? That's that's you, that's for the major up. release, or what you? I'm not holding on to it. You know how it goes. It's like it's it's so much yellow tape mm -hmm. to put these records out. <clears throat> I know it's, it's all about timing and everything mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm not holding on to it. Try, yeah, if yeah. it was up, to, yeah, come on. If it was up clean, to me, that should be out. Streaming rights and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? It's me. I, I'm not tripping about the record. I'm just like I said. I'm an East Side Buffalo. Just the fact that a guy like that up there when it's tapping with me and. The respect of my peers is that's really a, a big trophy to me. How did that collab happen? Cause cause Drake talking filthy on that record. Like we have mutual respect for each other. And people don't know, like, Toronto and Buffalo, our radio station, like Toronto gets our radio station, the Buffalo radio mm -hmm. station. Mm -hmm. So when he did the Quiet Storm and he had that on his album, that guy, that voice, that was the voice of, of 93.7. That was our radio station. Mm -hmm. We did that a couple albums ago, whatever album that was. So it's like, uh, I don't think he ever said it publicly, but it's some type of kinship. Towards uh, Buffalo and Toronto, yeah, right you know there, like exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. So uh, we have been had that mutual respect. I know people in his camp listen to my. Shit. Everybody listen to Drake shit. So he was, t he, he, I see, he mentioned something about us in an interview he had. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was a rapperito interview. Yeah, hell yep. yeah. I, I was gonna say it. I don't know you supposed to mention other niggas. Oh, it's all love. It's yeah, all love. People, yeah, yeah. Like, niggas get money on your block. Yeah, yeah right, so <laughs> And then we just, and then like, I know he was tapped in with Conway, and I think I tapped in with him. He was like, "Yeah, let's do something." And then he sent me a song. He sent me a couple joints, actually. You know what I mean? Oh, see, so I got a couple records together. Yeah. Oh, okay. I only heard one. Ten more commandments. Mm -hmm. Talk about that song. Ten more crack commandments. It's a, it's a record that you know everybody know who wrote the record, Biggie. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to talk about something like on the on this ten to talk. Album, man, I'm talking about. Talk about social media and the Tim. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Commandment. It's like, you know, because the commandments evolved, you know what I'm saying? Like right. everything else. So, you know, social media posting, just different things that Big didn't say. And I got on the phone with like real dope boys, you know what I'm saying? Like who, who active, like, yo, what's the rules? Like what's going on right now? And so I just wanted to make it real, you know what I'm saying? And you got Diddy, Diddy, you got Diddy on, on the ad list. Diddy's on it, on the ad yep, yep, But yep. he's telling folks to do other things, though. Do like real you, estate. You <laughs> rapping <laughs> the streets and Diddy talking like, yeah, go do real no, estate. No, like, what's your why? <laughs> what's your why? Because <laughs> that's the evolution of it. Okay. The last rule, the most important, was get out the game. Correct. So when Diddy talking about uh, legal hustling and black culture and black that, like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it falls in it. it in context. What got you out the game? What was it? Was it hitting that that brick wall? Was it jail? Was it what? What got you out the game? Mm, definitely a brick wall. 
Cause like that, yo, this shit crazy. Like people would never believe me. I'm so happy y'all asked me these questions. These be up here saying about anything. This shit is real. Black Soprano family, I started that in Elmira. Only I've been rapping, I've been doing shit, but I I just wanted to change. You know what I'm saying? I when I I did my first bed when I was 18. And and through my twenties, I was going back and forth to prison. So I started off as the youngest dude. And by the time I did my last shit, I was 27. Mm -hmm. So it was like I, I watched myself like, damn, mm -hmm. shit, when you come back, you can be the 30 year old nigga, then you're gonna be the 40 year old nigga. So it's like you better chill the fuck out. So anyway, my hood is is a drug dealing hood, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Not glorifying that, because I don't glorify that shit, I glorify where I came from mm -hmm. and how far I came. So Wes had a situation. This is crazy, man. Wes had a situation and he was telling me, he he been court me like, yo, Buzz, come with me, come to Atlanta, let's do this, let's do that. But he didn't end up telling me type till a couple months later down the line, like, yo, I gotta I'm about to get a deal with Interscope. In my head, I'm like, why the f ain't been say that? I would have been stopped doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But I had an opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's like the dudes in the streets right now, they're not gonna leave that alone unless they have a clear cut opportunity. That's right, you gotta have an alternative. I had an alternative. I'm mm -hmm. like, I, I left everything alone. I dropped everything right in the middle of in the middle where my whole team was eating. It looked at me like I was crazy. One of my favorite lines, uh, your early lines, when you said you like the only rapper the bid with E and sign a deal with Hov. Yeah. You know, you, you talking about the good brother Emory, Emory Jones. Break, break that down. You was you was locked up with Emory. E, we was in the same uh fed spot for a while. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we wasn't we wasn't uh familiar with each other in the spot. You know what I'm saying? But I knew of him. He knew of me. You know what I'm saying? And then just like years years later, Wes played him a song. You know him and Wes was kicking it. He was like, he showed him a picture. He's like, yo, I know that dude. Mm -hmm. And he called him and we kicked it. In. But that's crazy, right? That'll never happen again. Only rapper to bed with E and do a deal with Hov. That'll never happen again. No, I had to ask him. I was like, okay, first of all, first thing I was thinking was like, but well, how old is Benny? Number one. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then right. number two, I asked him, like, yo, did, he really did a bill with you? And he was like, yeah, he was younger than me, though. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was in my 20, I was like 21, 22. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? He, he was an older guy. Like, everybody knew, like, they was like, yo, that's Jay Z, man. Jay. In, the, in, the, in the spot. Like, I remember, I remember, like, I worked in the kitchen. I remember mm -hmm. him coming through the kitchen. I'm hitting with the scoop of rice or something. And I'm like, damn, I just gave that some rice. <laughs> <laughs> like, <really? laughs> so hold on, y'all didn't talk at all back then? Nah, you know, I, I, I'm not one of like, I ain't want to bother this yeah. nigga. Everybody probably auditioning for this nigga, all type of, but I ain't want to bother him. extra scoop? He was gone too late. I was going to hit him with the scoop. He was already gone. I'm like, yeah. he good. You know I mean? But y'all bond now when y'all see each other got to be a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. It's got. It, it's like the wink, wink. If you mm -hmm. know, you know. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because, you know, prison is that, that crazy, man. That, you, you, It's like... I hate to I hate to compare it like to the army. I'm just saying it's like something that you go through where you where you become a band of brothers by going through it. Prison mm -hmm. is that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you y'all signed the Rock Nation, right? Yes, yes, sir. How, how's that been? Man, that's dope, man. I, I love it over there. Those mm -hmm. is those is the big homies. That's what it feel like. It feel like you know what I mean the hustling homies from the hood just giving you game and just kicking it with you and keep you on point. And it don't even got to be uh nothing necessarily that they telling you to do is that mm -hmm. you know the standards that they stand on mm -hmm. so you want to make sure you hustling you want to make sure you move in a certain way when you around guys like that do you run all the music by hove and tata -ta and emery them now or? i definitely send them some shit. has mr carter got on anything yet no he hasn't he haven't he haven't got on nothing man hove hove not thinking about rapping i'm gonna be honest with you mm -hmm. and when he do it's a, like a eureka moment he just thinking about it in that moment ain't like he even had his brain on it mm -hmm. but Man, I, I'm dying to get. That's like one of my whole. My, I need me my. Shit is, I need me a whole verse, and I need that Rockefeller chain. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm auditioning for that Rockefeller <laughs> chain. I need my. Shit, you know what I'm saying? Have you asked him? Have you, you asked him for ask both? For Yo, let's you let me tell you. That. I don't know how that works. You don't ask for that. He right. You can't. You you don't ask for that, right? Mm -hmm. But me, I'm a East Side Dirty Buffalo. I, I'm throwing hints. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing hints. I remember like a like a like a year or two ago. We, we, we was texting and I'm saying something like, I sent him a song and I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to get that chain. Like that nigga talking cold. So he like, yeah, you you, you definitely making a good case for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yo. <laughs> like, damn, I'm get it or not, I don't know what's going on. Have you asked him for a feature? Hell yeah. What do you just put back exclamation marks, question marks? To be honest with you, he told me, he told me it's like, yeah, he, that's not the space that he in right now. He wanted to, because I flew out to LA one time when he had an idea for a song. It was mm -hmm. like, yo, Hov, when you come out here, got an idea for a song. But that never materialized. You know, he busy and shit. Yeah, I heard you say on the record you was at his crib. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Was that inspiring? Hell yes. Well, I, was, I was over there. I had to, uh, I had some Timberlands on. I'm trying not to walk hard on the floor and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. Take the shoes off? <laughs> nah, he did, man. All right, when we come back, we got more with Benny the Butcher. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Benny the Butcher. Charlemagne? Do you feel like artists can still be in the streets while maintaining a rap career? No. 
especially if you're a real street mm-hmm. you know maybe the dudes who are trying to act like they street you know what i'm saying i'm a street if i'm in the streets like it's this thing i'm back <laughs> you know what i mean mm-hmm. like what we doing you've been over here every day what we doing you know and i'm saying like that ain't no place for guys like us and real people back home who still doing what they doing they understand that like ain't nobody going who love you who got care and concern for you going to expect you to come down, come to the hood just to show them that you care, just to show mm-hmm. them that you really like that. Like, come on, we grown ass men. You know, I'm out here trying to work. I'm trying to make it so you don't got to be in that mall. You know what I'm saying? I know you I know you love Buffalo, but you, you, you did have to get up out of there for a little minute, though. Man, hell yeah. Hell yeah, I'm out of there right now. I got a, uh, I got a condo there, but when I go t- go back home, I'm like, I'm not like going where I used to live at and shit. I'm chilling. Sometimes I don't even leave my building. You know what I mean? Like, Buffalo is like that. You know what I mean? My nigga is still in this shit. I'm guilty by association, so you got to be careful. Do you think the, 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 the hate is still to the point where they would cut their nose off to spite their face? Because, you know, like y'all do so much for the city. Man, I don't think so. You know, people talk shit all the time. Like, man, what Benny done for the city? They do a little dumb mm-hmm. shit like that all the time. But for the most part, man, them people back home, they love us, man. We love them, too. I always, I always said this. If anybody do something to me, they're going to deserve whatever come with it. Even the shit in Houston, you know, them, them niggas did some renegade shit. But what happened in Houston for people that don't know? Uh, what happened in Houston, man, I was I went into Walmart, I forgot my mask, and I went back to get my mask, and like, it was behind me, like, dropped that. I really, I, I looked back, it's like a little, it's like a short behind me. With you a was gun. by yourself? Nah, I wasn't by myself. I was like with uh, two of my homeboys, you know what I'm saying? One of them walked back with me to the car. You know, this is the first time I'm talking about this shit publicly. I, I, that's what this is for. Come up mm-hmm. here and talk to you about this shit. But my other man, he walked with me. They was on him before they was on me. So by the time he got on me, like, they already had my boy. So it was like, drop that. I look back, there's a nigga with a gun. You know what I'm saying? Put it up. I kind of, like, hit the gun down, took off on him. I, I ran back to the whip. We in a Rolls Royce truck. You know, them big, you got, you got like, 10 of them shits already, don't you? I know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we get to this shit, So I run down this way. By the time I get here, somebody else came with the slammer on me. I'm like, hey, you know, they got me. You know what I'm saying? So... That's when he like backed up, looked around, hit me in my leg. So they shot you on purpose for running? Hell yeah. No, 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 no. I don't think they shot me for running, to be honest. I don't know. I can't speak for them, but I feel like it was a, it was a small dude. Mm-hmm. And these was young dudes. So it's like, I kind of feel like before I got shot, I was 195. I lost a little weight. I feel like he really didn't want to get close to me until I was disabled. You know what I'm saying? Because like, yeah, it yeah, might yeah. be a tussle. Exactly. That's, that's what I think it was. You know what I'm saying? And they just wanted to rob y'all, basically. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. How did you, did you, how did you move differently after that? I, I, I be with more niggas now, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Tighten up security, but that's this what the fuck I'm going to say. I'm going to be honest with you. You can't protect yourself from this shit. Mm. And another thing about that situation, you know, a lot of niggas think that just some two niggas walked up on me like, yo, that wasn't it. Niggas came like, like the army. So even right now, how niggas be with security, mm-hmm. that don't be enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For, for my situation, mm-hmm. that wasn't enough. It's about not putting yourself in them situations, and mm-hmm. it's about having a deterrent. If one of my homies pulling out and hitting that son, it's already too late. We already made the wrong move. Correct. If he got to shoot at somebody, if he got to, we, we already f***ed up, you know what I'm saying? We already in the, in the wrong situation, you know what I'm saying? Since Houston is a small town, everybody knows each other. Mm-hmm. Did, they, did it ever come back, the jewelry? Or did they ever reach back out? Not not reach back out with that, but you never seen it on the internet, no shit like that. Of course, you know, niggas ain't hit me back. I'm tapped in, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I love Houston. All you gotta do is call Jay Prince. Jay Prince is the metal detector of Houston. Thing about, I don't want none of that shit after that type of shit. They don't want no favors. I mean, I don't want, I don't want nothing, man. Mm-hmm. And I was working with DMX. We, we hear the story, Swiss told the story all the time that he called and he was up there with you. So explain hooking up with DMX and him doing some verses with y'all. Man, it's dope, man, working with X, man. Cause he, he another dude who, he is who he say he is. When mm-hmm. you meet him, he who he is mm-hmm. on them records, man. He's just, he, he a hip hop guy, man. And when a person like him tell him tell you he f with you, he really f with you. So he just wild, energetic, and his he's heavy opinionated. You know what I'm saying? He gonna speak his mind and you know, X is X was X. You know what I'm saying? Come up to Buffalo? You know, X got baby mamas in Buffalo. One, I don't wanna say plural. You know what I'm saying? I know he had a baby mama in Buffalo before. So he did like jail time in Buffalo. Like he X loved Buffalo. First time I ever seen him, one of the homies was was with Jap. He used to come through he used to run with the dude Jap from Buffalo. Mm-hmm. He was at a, uh, the hippodrome. It was a uh, a pool hall and mm-hmm. they call us like, yo. Yo, X up here, come, yo, come up here, come up here. You know, I, I, I was rapping back then. We went up there to the pool hall and shit. I remember like we ended up getting the dude Jap number, calling and shit. Niggas never picked up. I spit the best verse I had on that answering machine. <laughs> <laughs> Take me back to that time where Hip Boy said uh, he, he saw you cry in the studio because he talks about how he only saw two artists mm-hmm. cry in the studio before it was Nipsey when he did the second verse on Racks in the Middle and when you, when you did Thank God I Made It. What, what hit you about that? 
man, it's thank God I made it. Mm-hmm. I'm a I'm an East Side Buffalo nigga from Montana Avenue and Lanefield Projects. At that moment, that shit really hit me like, damn, nigga, like you made it. I ain't like no Justin Bieber or nothing, but you you got to go back to the hood. Mm-hmm. Your kids is good, your family is straight, and that's overwhelming. You know what I'm saying? That was overwhelming. So I think Hit Boy trying to pass me the weed. And I'm shedding tears. I don't want this Hit Boy to see see me crying. I, 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 I ain't I know he seen me till he mentioned it in, in, in me. <laughs> yeah. For real, I'm like, I'm like, oh, that nigga did see me crying. That day. Because I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm human, but I'm not like, I don't, I don't get in my emotions like that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I ain't, I ain't want him to see me that. Not feel, not, not that I felt weak. Or I just ain't want nobody to see me like that. But it just hit me like, yeah, you made it. That's crazy. Well, listen, man, you can't say you, uh, you had interviews with Connects and not the Breakfast Club anymore. That's right. I can't say that no more. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> now, 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 now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in the rap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> real, I'm gonna make it sound real jazzy, man. All right, man. When did, when did debut dropping? You got a date yet? Man, I, I'm going to say this date anyway. I don't know. They, can I say the date? February 11th. February oh, so, 11th, man. Oh, so Excuse the Def Jam debut coming? Uh, this not oh, no, this is Tana Talk 4. This is Tana Talk 4. Tana Talk 4. Okay, okay, okay. then okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to juice up. I'm going to go kiss babies, go to the All-Star game. You know what I'm saying? Do me some sh- And then I'm going to bring the... I got to juice up before I drop I that sh-. You know what I mean? I got What you. other features on Tana Talk 4? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting to everybody here so they can see. Okay. It's, it's, it's the spitters on there. So far, we got Diddy, mm-hmm. Cole. Mm-hmm. Cole. Conway. Conway, West Side, Shane, of course. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, a couple surprises. All right, okay. Uh-huh. Well, there you have it. It's Benny, Benny the Butcher. Butcher. We finally made it up here. The Breakfast Club. Listen up. It's just in. All the guys. Guys. The Rumor Report. Guys. Guys. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the Rumor Report. The Breakfast Club. All right. Well, Adele wants people to know that everything is good over here. She posted a picture of herself looking like she was laughing having a good time and she said hi yes so I'm really happy to say that I am performing at the Brits next week and I'll also be popping in to see Graham for a chat on the couch while I'm in town too I'm looking forward to it oh and Rich sends his love so that's her way of letting you know no breakup she's still with Rich Paul and she is going to be making appearances even though she's canceled or postponed her Las Vegas residence what do y'all think Rich do to make it right and, and do you think he'll be able to top it on Valentine's Day? What do you think? Well, I also was speculating in my head about in Vegas, she canceled or postponed her residency, you know, the day before. And so maybe they started that just to make her look bad. Who knows? I don't know. I'm Who just Because there's always sources, sources, sources. Mm-hmm. You never know. All right. Now, young boy has called out his label. He said, I was going number one two weeks straight with a mixtape, so they took it down off the charts. I don't give a F. You still can't stop me. Don't sign to Atlantic. If you were artist, they're not going to support you, especially if you live a certain way. And then he said, why blackball me? I'm the good guy. I had zero idea that NBA Youngboy was signed to Atlantic Records. I didn't know NBA Youngboy was on a major label. Mm-hmm. Well, now I got a little bit of intel on this. And so from what I'm hearing is that they wanted to actually... Uh, from what I'm hearing, Young Boy's manager wanted to take one of the songs off the album. They were originally 20, uh, the mixtape, the album, and they wanted it to only be 19. One of the songs was removed, so they had to repopulate it. So the label never took the album down. They just had to remove one song that they requested for them to remove. So uh, that's the news that does, I'm hearing. Does NBA Young Boy need a major label? Though? Like, what does a major label do for Young Boy? He yeah. doesn't. He doesn't get no radio play. Mm-mm. He got the internet on lock. Mm-hmm. Like, what did he? What does he need a major label for? Um, I mean, he's been signed for a while there. So I had no they, idea. Yeah, so maybe that's part what did they of what do for him? Is, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Meek was saying he had a problem with the, with the, with the same label too. Yeah. Right? Now Meek also has accused Atlantic Records of. He said, "I made Atlantic Records m- hundreds of millions and let them rape me out of Roddy uh, artists." They came to to me about in jail. They still saying I can't drop music until nine months after my last album got blackballed. Just wrapped buildings and Nina art with talent. Roddy my youngin still, but that label separated us instantly when the millions came in from him. Same thing they tried to do with me and Rose. It takes a long time to catch up too because most of them tied in for the love of some money. Artists scared to speak up. Now, I heard about this too because you know I asked. And so what they're saying about this is that Meek Mill is really signed to MMG, who has a deal with Atlantic. So whatever deal was worked out was worked out that way. And also with Roddy Rich. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say all that. So I'll wait and see. What are these new artists doing wrong, though? Because you already know what the major labels are going to do. You know what record labels are going to do, period. So it's just like, why do people keep walking through those doors if they know what the label is going to do? Because well, I think it's money. I think when they first come out, they need the bread. They need mm-hmm. to be able to be comfortable and be able to record and be safe. So when they take that advance... Mm-hmm. Well, 
Also, it's not even just that, but sometimes people don't have a team. Like, if you're coming from some place, you don't have anybody that's going to do marketing. You don't know how to even put your stuff on streaming services. You don't know how to do certain things. And and that ties into money, too. You don't have the people to hire. You know, who's going to do it? So, what, I'm saying, so what are they getting wrong? Like, like, where's the disconnect between the artist and the label in this situation? Um, some people don't really talk to the people at the label either. Like, there's a lot of go-between, so it might be management, disconnect. It's not usually the artist talking directly to the label. Mm. There's a lot of other people involved, too. So, who's to say? Some people have good experiences, some people don't. All right, now, um, Beyonce has launched her Year of the Tiger Ivy Park collection. And so they're saying that's also great for Valentine's Day because it's red and pink, and that's also... Uh, the perfect love colors but the year of the tiger for Chinese New Year you can see um, some of those things now that they've done with Adidas and so you can see that it'll be on adidas.com February 9th and it'll be available globally on February 10th and Taraji is said to be starring as Suge Avery in the Color Purple movie musical Okay, okay. it's a new film adaptation of the Color Purple based on Alice Walker's 1982 novel famous uh, Color Purple we all love the movie too already so uh, that book was adapted for film by Steven Spielberg by the way back in 1985 and so now they're going to do a new one and they're saying that it's slated to be released December 20th, 2023. Drop on the clues bombs with Taraji P. Henson. Should be a great show, Gabriel. Taraji, keep a check coming. Mm-hmm. Well-deserved check. All right. Well, I'm Angela Yee and that is your rumor report. All right. Charlamagne, who are you giving that donkey to? Man, donkey of the day for after the hour is going to Garrett Saldano. I think that's how you pronounce his last name, Saldano. Uh, he's running in Michigan's Republican primary for governor. And he's just one of these individuals that thinks he can tell women what to do with their bodies. We'll talk about it. All right. And then after that, of course, ask ye 800-585-1051. You can get on the phone lines right now if you need relationship uh, questions. Or if you have relationship questions, I should say, you could call her now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Our audible pick of the day is the perfect day to boss up. This is Rick Ross's guide to building your own empire. Now listen up. Your first 30 days of Audible are free when you sign up at audible.com slash breakfast club. This is America. There is no question that there are problems in this country between police and community. Yes, you are a donkey. The latest on that police killing of a black man. Now to new developments in the deadly spa shooting rampage. Uh, and yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. And so we are in a state of emergency. Okay, white supremacist violence is and always has been the number one threat to our society. But I'm also very proud that my wife is white. My wife is white. The, the Breakfast Club, bitches. All right, Charlene, please tell me, why was I your donkey of the day? My damn light, it don't work, and I need to light my Palo Santo. Uh, okay, we got a doozy for you today, guys. Uh, donkey of the day for Wednesday, January 2nd. No, February 2nd. Wednesday, February 2nd, second day of Black History Month. Goes to Garrett Saldano. Okay, he's running in Michigan's Republican primary for governor, and he is getting donkey of the day today because he said rape victims shouldn't have abortions because the baby they are carrying may be the next president. Can't make this kind of stuff up. You know what's interesting? Some of the best writers in the business couldn't make this kind of stuff up, okay? It doesn't matter if they're comedy writers, drama writers, horror writers. They couldn't make this stuff up either because they would be afraid to in 2022 because they wouldn't want to be canceled. But if there's a group of people who don't subscribe to cancel culture in any way, shape, or form and say what the hell they want, it's GOP politicians. Let's listen to Face to Facts podcast with April Moss to hear what Garrett Saldano had to say. And then I get it. There's a lot of situations out there um, when you talk about rape and everything else and, hey, may, may, maybe they deserve an abortion. We're always going to fight for life. And I have a great personal story of one of my mentors. And he was going through life and he was adopted. So he started to look up his birth family to figure out who they were. And he figured out that his mom was gang raped in a subway um, train station by five guys. Mm. And it kind of like tore out his heart when he found that out. But then he started to really appreciate and understand what his birth mother went through, that she had the courage to deliver him. Mm -hmm. And so what we must start to focus on is not only to defend the DNA when it's created, but however, how about we start inspiring women in the culture to let them understand and know how heroic they are, that God put them in this moment and they don't know that little baby inside them may be the next president, maybe the next person that changes um, humanity may get us out of the situation maybe in the future. We don't know that. Wow. 
Ladies, uh, imagine having to deal with the trauma of being raped, then finding out you're pregnant, and somebody tells you that God put you in that moment. Why do we act like God didn't give us free will? Life is about choices, and those choices are fueled by your higher and lower self. Rape is clearly a choice fueled by your lower self, okay? God don't have nothing to do with that. I'm not a spiritual leader, so don't listen to me. All I know is that free will is granted to every human. If a human desires to incline towards the good and be righteous, they have the power to do so. And if they decide to incline toward the unrighteous and be wicked, then they have the power to do that too. We always want to bring God into our nut-ass criminal decisions. Okay, if you were submitting your will to God, you probably wouldn't be committing the crime in the first place. So let's not bring God into this. Second, let's talk about choices. I don't understand why men are so hell-bent on telling women what choice to make with their body. Mm -mm. Sure, you can still raise a child that could be a productive citizen in this society, but that's easy for you to say because you weren't the one who was raped. You aren't the one who psychologically and emotionally has to go through that, okay? I wouldn't wish that kind of trauma on nobody. I would not wish that kind of choice on my worst enemy. That's why I don't understand why people like Garrett Saldano talk about it like it's just something uncomfortable you have to live through when it happens, okay? Like walking to your car in the rain. You know how when you have to be somewhere and you may want to wait until it stops raining, but if you wait, you'll be late, so you grab your umbrella, your raincoat, or maybe just a little vanilla folder to hold over your head and you run to your car, and when you get in, you realize, okay, it got a little wet, but 15 minutes later, you dry, and you're not thinking about it, you make it to where you're going on time, and all is right with the world. That's how folks like Garrett Sedano treat this rape pregnancy conversation, okay? They all sound so nonchalant about it. Remember in 2012 when the late... Uh, Todd Akin, or is it Aiken? Aiken. Todd Aiken during his campaign for U.S. Senate uh, said legitimate rape rarely results in pregnancy. Listen. If it's a legitimate rape, uh, mm. the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. Remember in 2019 when then Florida House Speaker Jose Olivia apologized for referring to pregnant women as host bodies several times during a TV news interview about an anti-abortion bill? Listen. And it's a complex issue because one has to think, well, there's a host body and that host body has to have a certain amount of rights because at the end of the day, it is that body that that c carries this entire other body to term. What the hell is he even talking about? Listen, GOP politicians, you have to care about the woman having the babies as much as you do the fetus growing inside them. It makes zero sense to care so much about the fetus, but when the fetus becomes a full blown adult, you refer to them as host bodies and tell them that being raped and impregnated is an act of God and you want to strip away their right to choose, okay? Michigan, you know Governor Gretchen Whitmer is running for re-election in November. Uh, I would say the statement from Garrett Saldano is the kind of, you know, thing that would usually cause you to lose races, but it's 2022. Things have changed. So, hey, I'm not endorsing anyone or telling you who to vote for. I'm just letting you know the kinds of things that are being said on the campaign trail so you can make a choice. Key word here is choice, which is something when it comes to abortions, politicians like Garrett Saldano don't want you to have. Please give GOP candidate for Governor Garrett Saldano the biggest ER. <laughs> Matter of fact, let, let, let Chelsea Handler get in on that. Hee-haw, hee-haw, that is way too much Dan mayonnaise. Effie Griffin got anything to say? Please give this giant jar of mayo the biggest hee-haw. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, wow. thank you for that donkey today. Mm -hmm. Up next, ask ye, 800-585-1051. If you need relationship advice or any type of advice, call ye right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. What, 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 what you want to know? Baby mama issues? Need some words of wisdom? Call up now for Ask Ye. 800-585-1051. The Breakfast Club. Come on. Need relationship advice? Need personal advice? Just need real advice. Call up now for Ask Ye. Keep the bread. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time for Ask Ye. Hello, who's this? My name. Mm, I don't want to say my name. <laughs> okay. Right. What's your question? Okay, good morning. Good morning. I've been in a relationship for, I don't know, about 15 years. The issue is there's a lot of cheating, but not on my behalf. And we got married five years ago. Been through it all. Jail, prison, everything that you can even mention. Should I stay is my question now. Do you want to? I go back and forth every single time. Are things different? I'm actually different? filed for divorce, but I didn't. I didn't finish the process. Are things different? Like what's what's changed? Everything has changed. Like in terms of income on both parties, 
our lifestyle, everything has changed. But there's no real, there's no progress together. We're doing better separately. Okay, well, it sounds like you answered your own question. Okay. If there's no progress together and you're better separately, what does that tell you? Mm, That is pretty much done. Don't you want to be happy one day? with everything I do I do I do I do and I want him to be happy too you know it's it's just not healthy you know yeah sometimes we get so used to dysfunction we Mm -hmm. think it's normal right thank you (laughs) no problem you answered your own question all right ask ye 800-585-1051 if you need relationship advice or any type of advice call ye now it's the breakfast club good morning here's some real advice with Angela Yee it's ask ye Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're in the middle of Ask Yee. Hello, who's this? Hey, my name's Blake. How y'all doing this morning? Good morning. What's your question for Yee? So, my dude and I, we've been kind of on off for three years now. Um, and I'm 14 weeks, or I was 14 weeks pregnant at the time. Now I'm 15 weeks. But um, we ended up getting into a domestic uh violence type of situation mm. about like a week and a half ago and um he ended up putting me in jail whoa he i promise you he lied on the statement said that i was beating on him but it was kind of the other way around so what <laughs> all right talk like, about what happened um well long story short you know he came home from watching a football game drinking with his friends whatever we haven't really been on good terms for a while Oh, it's kind of traumatizing talking about it, but mm. he ends up putting his hands on me. Okay. And while I'm trying to get out of, you know, the the hold that he had, he gets hit in the lip and he starts bleeding. So, of course, he calls the cops and says that I was beating on him. I can't believe he did that. Uh, Facts. But, you know, men are very, well, I wouldn't say all, but some are very controlling, some are very manipulative. So, you know, I put myself in that situation. <laughs> I felt so um yeah at the end of the night I literally end up in handcuffs and get locked up and the whole time I was in jail I couldn't stop like thinking about it we living in a situation because it's like he you know he he promised he swore up and down he loved me and you know he's he's gonna protect me and you know our child but then at the same time it's like he abuses he so he abused you while you were pregnant and then he put you in jail uh, I wouldn't say abuse, but like definitely put hands on each that other. That is abuse, though. Uh, I, 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 maybe I'm gaslighting this, you know, because it's just like hard to really swallow. But um, but yeah, like I really couldn't believe it because you know it's like when we're in love, it's like we would never think that that person can do that to us. Right. So and, I want you to acknowledge that what he did to you was wrong and it was abuse because he put his hands on you and you were pregnant. Yeah. So. That's what my homegirls say. Because it feels like you're making excuses for him. And I'm not blaming you for that because I understand that you don't want to look at this person in that way. But it just hurts, you know, because it's like, dang, you really like. So you put hands on me and then you lie to the cops. And now you put me and your unborn child in jail, you know? Right. Like, that's the part that really hurts me. (laughs) And the fact that you're still making excuses for this person who has done... This is horrible that he would do this to you and to his child. Yeah. Anything could have happened. That's what I was saying. The whole time, like, I was, you know, locked up. Well, I wouldn't say locked up, but the whole time I was in jail, I was like, yo, like, is my baby okay? Like, I was, you know, dragged around. Like, I was really genuinely, like terrified of what could have happened like I don't know nothing and I was just really scared but at the same time it was like dang like I really loved him it's like how could he do this to me and now it's like do I even want him a part of my life with this you know with our baby like yeah I I need you to to think about yourself and your child before you think about him it feels like you're putting how he feels and his feelings ahead of you guys and you're protecting him still which you know, I see that you're traumatized from this and you still haven't come to terms with what happened. No, no, no. It's like that's the first time I've ever had anything on my record, period. Right. First time ever. So it was just like I was in shock. Like I was dumbfounded, I had no words for what happened. Take yourself out of this. If one of your friends were to tell you, look, the you know, my baby's father beat me up drag me around while I was pregnant and then put me in jail. What would you tell her? 
Oh, I would have told her, girl, get out, come here, like, leave that man alone. He, oh. Like, he obviously don't care about you, you know? Okay, and you love yourself and you love your child, right? Who you're, that you're about of to course. have. Of course. Okay, so let's take care of that first. We got to get you some help to make sure that you're okay. Because imagine he does this to you while you're pregnant. Has he ever put his hands on you before? It's not like a, like, he's not, like, punching me or anything. It's just, like, his hands on my throat. But, yeah, like, that's happening. So he before. chokes you. Yeah. Okay, so putting his hands on you, period, is abuse. Whether he's punching you, choking you, and that can escalate. Yeah, you don't know how here. that, you could end up not even being here. That's what my dad said. He was like, thank God you didn't end up in a body bag. Right. So I, and then he put you in jail. <laughs> yeah. I really want to tell you, like, you have to get out of a situation. You have to get away from him. You have yeah. to. It's for the, the sake of yourself, for your child. And we love you and care about you. And I don't want to see this happen to you. And this can really yeah. escalate into something even worse. And I want you to love yourself just as much. I appreciate that. So hold on the line. I'm going to get your information, okay? So we can follow up okay. and see what type okay. of help we can get for you. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good one. Okay. All right. Ask ye 800-585-1051. We got rumors on the way? Yes, and let's give you an update on the Astro World Festival lawsuits against Travis Scott and Live Nation. We'll tell you what the plan is moving forward. All right, we'll get into that. It's the Breakfast Club for morning. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. On the Breakfast Club. So listen up. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, so the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees have been announced for 2022. And some of the people on there, Dolly Parton, I didn't know she wasn't in there yet. Eminem, Lionel Richie, Carly Simon, Pat Benatar, Dionne Warwick, Duran Duran, Rage Against the Machine, Judas Priest, Eurythmics, um, Fela Kuti, A Tribe Called Quest. Those are some of the people that have been nominated, by the way. Mm-hmm. That would be dope. A Tribe Called Quest, Eminem. That'd be amazing. And uh, Fela Kuti. So all of those people. And they will actually announce who gets inducted in May. Just so you guys can recall, last year's class also included Tina Turner, LL Cool J, Gil Scott Heron, The Go-Go's, uh, Jay-Z, Foo Fighters, and more. All right, now let's do some breaking news. We're watching Brian Flores right now on CNN. And he is talking about his lawsuit against the NFL. He's suing the NFL and three teams. As uh, And he's the former Miami Dolphins coach. He is alleging racism in hiring practices. Amongst the things that we discussed that he talked about was getting fired, even though the Dolphins um, were actually doing really well. They won back-to-back. Um, they had great seasons. And for some reason, they had their first back-to-back winning season since 2003 while he was there. For some reason, he was fired. And what he is saying is that he was treated with disdain and held out as someone who was non-compliant and difficult to work with because he didn't want to do things like tampering and recruit a prominent quarterback at the end of the 2019 season. And then he also said he was offered $100,000 for every loss uh, that season because that would have actually help with their draft position. Well, right now, he's talking about why he's suing and what he told his kids. And that conversation went just like this. Look, guys, there's only one black head coach in the National Football League. There's, as they all know, they know there's a lot of, uh, you know, black players in the league, and we just feel like it's unfair. And, you know, dad may never coach again. He's taking that risk, but um, he's doing it so you guys don't don't deal with um, some of the things that uh, him and his peers are dealing with now. Brian Flores is saying there is racism in hiring practices within the NFL. And he also alleges discrimination regarding his interview processes with Denver and New York. And like we said, his firing last month by Miami. Now, as far as whether or not he'll ever coach again and comparisons to Colin Kaepernick, here's what he had to say. I'm for and for anyone whose whose goal is to create change. Um, And, you know, I back that. Um, I understand the risks. And I want to coach. I'm gifted to coach. I love coaching. I'm passionate about it. And um, I'm hopeful that I, I will coach again. Right. Yeah, it's, it's going to be hard to uh, prove racism, even though you can see it. I mean, it's absolutely racial bias in the NFL. But his lawyer just said, you know, he feels like it's a slam dunk case. So they must have some hard evidence if they get the sworn testimony. I'm sure we're going to see some wild emails and more mm-hmm. text messages and everything else if the lawyer is saying it's going to be a slam dunk case. 
All right. Well, we will keep you updated as this is happening right now. And let's talk about these Astro World Festival lawsuits against Travis Scott and Live Nation. They have all been bundled into one case. The lawsuit will represent about 2,800 victims combined from the music festival that left 10 dead and hundreds injured. So right now, uh, they had granted a motion January 26th for nearly 400 lawsuits filed by organizers and victims to combine litigation for a single judge. The lawsuit, like we said, will represent nearly 2,800 victims. And again, that's something that is still ongoing. So they said that move was agreed upon by both sides, allowing a more efficient pretrial procedures, make it easier to negotiate a single settlement to resolve all of the cases. And Kanye West has declared February as Black Future Month and is also hosting a conference. I don't know if you guys had a chance to see this, but he wrote uh, February is now Black Future Month. Hashtag BFM. He also accompanied that with a photo that could double. Maybe some people are saying as album art and photos and clips have surfaced online. He was hosting a press conference. Some of the attendees were draped in black like Antonio Brown, Gunna, Shansia, Fabio Foreign. They were all spotted in attendance. And Broccoli City Festival has announced their 2022 lineup that features 21 Savage, Lil Durk, Ari Lennox, Rico Nasty, uh, Jeezy, Summer Walker, Wizkid, Gunna, and more. Oh, Babyface Ray is on there. But Wale responded and said that he's pulling out of the show. And so people were wondering why. And he said, respect is why. And they said, the disrespect, you'll get your flowers one day. And he said, I won't. I'm convinced I won't ever. But it's good. And... Not sure exactly what happened, but he did say he doesn't care about headlining. It's not about that. And then Broccoli City did respond to this online Twitter back and forth. They said, we are looking to work something out with Wale. He is a great artist that we respect. We will work something out. It's love. We we black, he black. We all want to bring vibes to the city. And somebody posted, I don't blame Wale, Wale for pulling out of the Broccoli City Festival. He should be the headline artist. Enrico and Ari should be the openers for him. And y'all can go from there. I told you years ago to stop uh, supporting these festivals. Interesting. But doesn't the hottest artist of the moment usually headline? Or who do ever the biggest artist usually is? Usually the biggest artist. Well, he said it headline? wasn't about headlining, so I'm not sure what it's about, for sure. No, that's true. So we'll take him at his word. So who would that. be the biggest artist? Would that be what? Jeezy? What would you say on there now? 21 Savage? Well, it looks like the, the biggest names on here are 21 Savage, Ari Lennox, Lil Durk, then Wale, Rico Nasty, and Jeezy. Wale is the hometown hero, though. Yeah, he's right? hometown. So it should be something special for him, right? All right, Coachella is auctioning off 10 lifetime passes to their festival as crypto and, uh, well, as NFTs. So you got to use your crypto to get those NFTs, obviously. And so owners will receive passes to the festival every April and access to Coachella produce virtual experiences forever. That could be something valuable. People love Coachella. Well, Envy doesn't. (laughs) No, I don't want those. (laughs) <laughs> all right and we do want to uh, give a rest in peace to T. Wu. he was a pop smoke and Fabio foreign affiliate he was unfortunately shot dead he invented the Wu walk he was celebrating his new deal with million dollar music record label and they said he just signed early just in the signed, morning yes hours and later was killed hours later he was in Canarsie in Brooklyn and he was transported to Brookdale Hospital where unfortunately he passed so uh, rest in peace to T. Dot Wu. All right. Definitely sending him and his family healing energy. Lord have mercy. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. All right. People's Choice Mix is up next. 800 585 1051. Let's get to the mix. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Let's go. It's time to wake up. Yeah. It's the Breakfast Club. It's going on down. Angela Yee here. And my friends at the General Insurance give you quality car insurance for less. Check out their affordable rates and flexible payment options by calling 800-GENERAL or visiting thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne Tha Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, we got a new segment for uh, Black History Month. Yes, it's the second day of Black History Month, and in honor of that, the Black Effect Podcast Network has a new daily podcast called I Didn't Know, Maybe You Didn't Either, where my man B-Dot presents little-known facts about black history, just things you may not have known about black history, and I think it's such a great segment that I decided to bring it to the Breakfast Club. And today, my guy B-Dot talks about the history of clowns. That's right, clowns, like Bozo, homie, don't play that, and how they're rooted in racism. I didn't know. On today's episode of I Didn't Know, Maybe You Didn't Either, 
I have a question. Is there anything that ain't racist? Listen, in the late 1800s, when we were given our freedom, we were so poor. That's no secret. We had no money. We had no jobs. We had nothing. Going from bus to bus and from train to train, just trying to figure it out, trying to find a way. And there were these two white guys, Heath and McIntyre. And they said to themselves, you know what we could do? We could make us a pretty penny off of that. They painted their faces sad. They ripped up their clothes to look tethered. The equivalent of the hobo clown we see in the circus today. With the tethered clothes, the sad faces, the red nose. Racist clowns. So I ask you, in America, what ain't racist? I didn't know. Maybe you didn't either. I didn't know. That's right. I didn't know. Maybe you didn't either. Go download that right now on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network, hosted by my guy, B Dot. Okay. They drop daily, 6 a.m. every morning. So go get those little known black history facts, okay, that you didn't know. And, well, at least I didn't know. And maybe you didn't either. All right. And when we come back, we got the positive note. Don't move us to Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's time to get out of here now. Yeah, you went to go see Michael Jackson last night, right? The Michael Jackson Broadway play, I should say. Yeah, the musical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was amazing. I know a lot of people are planning to go see it, but when I tell you the whole audience was excited, standing up, dancing, and they were also dancing in their seats throughout the whole thing, uh, the cast was amazing. So shout out to everybody there and the set. I, I think that's one of the best set designs I've ever seen. And you know I love a Broadway play. And also shout out to Benny the Butcher for joining us this morning. Mm -hmm. Salute to the Butcher. Make sure you go grab that Tana Talk 4 when it comes out. When did he say it's coming out? Next Friday. Next Friday. Yep. You Next got a positive Friday. note now? Yeah, the positive note is simply this. Um, for everybody out there doing the work on themselves, you know, going to therapy, practicing different ways to heal, please remember that's for you, okay? That's for you. We have to accept that some people are effed up, and it's not our job to heal them. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done? 